welcome to the Mythos Mystery Society presents Hotel Hell! Brought to you by Schmuckies. Schmuckies, you can check in, but you can't check out. Uh, Chris is going to be running this one, so I'm going to toss it over to him. Oh yeah, my name is Chris. I'll be the keeper of this game and playing the NPCs for Hotel Hell. H Hello, I mean. That would give something away if it was called Hotel Hell, right? <laughs> Uh, I am Ty, and I am playing Dax McMillan, a uh, lawyer from L.A. Um, hello, I'm Emma. Uh, tonight I'm playing Annabelle Cosgrave, um, and she specializes, <gasps> no, in dogs and um, the occult, the esoteric. In dogs? Yes, also Excellent. dogs. <laughs> She'll be present on this journey with us. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao, meow, Bellas. It's me, your boy Garfield Fox. <laughs> I'm a young upstart millionaire who got his riches because his cat is Instagram famous. <laughs> and oh, my real name's Dave. All right, so our companions are not quite investigators. I guess they're on their way to British Columbia. They're in, heading in the northeast British Columbia, high northeast, close to Alaska, where it's a very desolate area. Uh, this particular area in the late 18th century had gold fever. It had struck the region, and the wake of everyone running there for gold, the Seven Stars Hotel was built right across the river from Mount Hoodoo, H-O-O-D-O-O. -O -O -O. And it wasn't long there before, uh, well, some odd things started to happen, but the hotel went down, it, it it came back up, it went back down, came back up, and, well, it came back down. And we are on March 31st, or March 30th, let's say March 30th of modern day. You've been traveling on the road all day and all night, a thousand miles away from the airport in which you land in the desolate area of the northern British Columbia. Now you've been picked up by a Chevy Tahoe and driving all day. Garfield, you've been annoyed because this entire trip, you, your uploads have been interrupted from your phone by all these constant alerts being sent out. Alerts that are popping up saying such things as California, sinkhole near uh, that one place where Disneyland is. Oh, I'm drawing a blank. And I'm Anaheim, thank you. Uh, near Anaheim, there is a sinkhole that had just happened. And then uh, another pop-up. Russian scientists have warned of seismic activity in near the east of Russia. Another alert pops up. Uh, volcanoologists are warning of significant activity along the Pacific Indo-Australian tectonic plates. Pop-up after pop-up. It just seems like the world is falling apart. Ugh. I'm trying to upload my videos here. How is a guy supposed to make a living with his cat if he can't upload videos with all these damn pop-ups getting in the way? I just throw my phone a little bit at the chair in front of me. <laughs> Before you do that, the last thing that interrupts you, that just is the last straw, is a ding, a text message from Seer Rebenish. Your contact that was out there uh, prescribed in the documents given to you at your grandfather's inheritance reading, God rest his soul. The text read, Welcome to beautiful British Columbia. When you reach the hotel, Peter will greet you at the front desk. See you in the morning with the workforce to get your new resort up and running. Again, spotty reception because of the desolate area and you continue through the dense forest down the dirt roads, finally pulling up to the fenced off hotel. The hotel still stands strong. It appears though, somehow it's like fading away as if it's fading into the background um things are starting to decay and and be decrepit a large sign that is supposed to read seven stars hotel above in huge yellow letters now says eve tars hoel a few of the letters have fallen off and you only count five stars remaining your chevy tahoe drops you off and pulls away well, this place is going to need a lot of work, and I pull my back, my luxury cat backpack around, which has a little bulb in it so I can see my cat, and I just isn't that right, Foxy? Isn't that right? We have to get this hotel up and running. It's going to be the best cat hotel in British Columbia, I swear. 
Mr. Fox, I'm gonna have to recommend you make sure the new lettering and the new stars stay up, because if they fall down, that's a lawsuit just waiting to happen. No, don't, don't tell me that. about lawsuits. This is just like that time Foxy accidentally bit that fan. <laughs> yeah, we will have to have a small, like, warning sign all along the hotel, like, not responsible for any injuries caused by the kitties. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah, yes, yes, because it will be a cat hotel where people can see a bunch of cats. Yes. I'm not- I'm not going through that again. It was such an annoyance. I lost like five followers from it. It was the worst. <laughs> and I'm gonna start walking up to the hotel. Sure. As you approach the hotel, you can kind of get a lay of the land a little bit. Uh, the hotel is close to the southern bank of the river, and there's a rotted but usable uh, wooden deck provided for mooring, uh, mooring boats. The west end of the hotel it has an outhouse. Uh, where it looks like they would keep supplies. On the eastern side, there is a decaying set of doors that look like they lead down, maybe to a cellar, maybe somewhere to close to the hotel's basement. Um, as you get closer, you see in the background toward the northeastern end of the hotel an enormous tree, oldest and largest in the facility, nearly 200 feet tall. Cats are going to have fun with that one. I, uh, I snap for, uh, my supernatural guide. Uh, I, I actually, as soon as you started talking about, like, the lawyer stuff, I walked away because I got bored. <laughs> so, I started walking towards the hotel, and if I saw that tree, I was already walking towards that tree. So when you snap for me, I'm gone. I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, snap expecting you, and then I look around and just go, where is she? Did she find a ghost? I turn, I, I turn to Dax. Did she find a ghost? Is she finding a ghost? <laughs> is this place I haunted? Don't, I don't think so. I don't think she found a ghost. What are the legal ramifications if this place is haunted? Well, uh, you know, there's no actual laws about ghosts. I, if you, they are injured in your hotel, you could be liable uh, from an insurance standpoint. But um, we're not going to take a ghost stance here, I don't think. I heard nothing, so therefore I'm happy about it. And I'm going to go start to, I see you over by the tree, and I'm going to walk over to you. You approach the tree, and like I said, it's 200 feet tall. A red cedar. And it looks like it has a belly button. It's kind of cute. What do you do? <laughs> I got my trusty sidekick dog. Um, I think, stop it. I think that uh, I would probably get a little bit closer and see if there's anything funky with it, like weird or supernatural or strange or odd. Start with a spot hidden check. I did get a, a, a 97. Oh, a 97 probably didn't pass. Good, 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 good. Yep. Uh, so you don't see too much. Looks like a big old tree. I lean over uh, the decks. Around, there's, there's leaves. It does, like I said, seem to have a belly button. Looks like a little indent in the tree. I lean over like the decks as she's inspecting, and I just go, this is why I've paid her the big bucks. <laughs> to find nothing. Um... <laughs> Does it look like a knot or like an actual belly button? Like in any. I Ew. hate that you're saying that. <laughs> um, it seems like there's a there's a point where there's the enormous tree. You couldn't even if you went to hug it, it would be longer than your arm span. But there just seems to be this kind of pinpoint. Everything's kind of going into. That's roughly about well, well you're short. Well you know you're five seven, so it's about belly button height for you. A little bit higher. I'm gonna touch it. So you touch around it, or you're gonna try and touch inside? No, I just like, boop, I just boop, I don't know, I'll, touch around, I'll put my hand over it. You put your hand over it, you can feel like there's just a cold suction coming in from this point in the tree. I imagine if you put your hand like this, you didn't go like this. Yeah, but flat, flat on mm -hmm. top of it. And it feels, what, like a vacuum? Uh, no, just, it, if someone was blowing wind onto you and you felt the cold, imagine the same thing going the other way, as if it was sucking wind in, you could feel cold almost coming towards it. Does the tree have a leak? Yes. <laughs> oh. Those sorts. Is it leaking? Ish. Ghosts? Yes. Oh, 
Oh, fuck. <laughs> I put my hands on my head and I walk away. You hear that, Dax? You hear that? Dax is, <laughs> Dax is not paying attention to the tree. He's, like, going out a notebook and, like, making notes about the hotel and, like, safety regulations and zoning. We better, we better see what Peter has to say about these ghost leaks that this house has. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna walk away, but I'm gonna maybe revisit this tree later, because I don't like that. As you turn around, you see an angry mob holding torches, yelling and screaming. You feel your back against the tree, your hands one over another, right over your belly button, being tied together, and you see a 10-inch steel spike being hammered through your hands, through your stomach, and into the tree. I hate when this happens. <laughs> go ahead and roll a, let's go with a pow check. 15, so I'm good. You're good, roll a d6. I got a five. Five, you take six sanity damage. Great, good. I'm assuming the rest As you of those feel the hammering too. into your stomach, you blink, and there's an annoying cat man in a leopard shirt staring at you. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> you all in there? <laughs> we were gonna go to the front door and see if Peter was in. Did did they see they didn't see any of this, right? Ask them. Oh, shit. Um, how much time has just passed in the last, you know? Too much, if you ask me. <laughs> I'm just minute. gonna walk over the front door. <laughs> From the moment you saw the vision and came to, seconds. But for you, it felt longer. Did any of you also see anything that shouldn't have been here? I've already walked off towards the thing, but Dax. Uh, I think there's, some, you know, probably some mold in that pool we got to look at, and there's uh, some broken skateboards. Okay, and I'm gonna start walking. <laughs> Emma found the plot. Everyone else is. <laughs> <laughs> Emma found the plot. Ty now put a a pool at the hotel that was not there before. <laughs> but hey, <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> Uh, are we, I guess we're walking up to the, well, at least I'm walking up to the front door. Yeah, I'll follow. Sure, who's going in first? Uh, me, it's my hotel, I guess. At least Make I think Make a it dodge is. roll. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's a 49, so that I didn't dodge. Basically, open You the didn't doors like dodge. This. Take two physical harm oh my as God. you go to open the doors and the doors fall off the hinges and fall right on top of you. Oh, thank God. That... See, this is what, I, this is what I'm talking about. We can't have this. And as I'll start trying to help pick up the door. <laughs> Get this thing off me! Get it off me! <laughs> you hear a voice. Well, yeah, you know, you gotta make sure you, you push one door and you hold on to the other. And then they kind of stay apart. And then you gotta kind of balance them, me. <laughs> I'm gonna dust myself off. Are you Peter? Well, you can call me Old Pete. I'm gonna turn to Dax, I'm just like, can I sue him for this? <laughs> well, it's, it's your hotel, so no, you could sue yourself for it, but that's, you don't want it. I'll <laughs> see you in court one day, old Pete, but it, uh, I, I, I show him my text with my, uh, the, the text that I got. I'm supposed to talk to you, this is my hotel now. Oh, old Pete knows you're supposed to be right here, yes sir. Old Seer, Seer Ravnish told old Pete, yes sir. And you see there's a man, he's sitting in a rocking chair with a flannel shirt, overalls, a straw hat, corn cob pipe, just kind of <laughs> rocking like this. His eyes are kind of bugged out, looking two different directions, but he's facing you. But neither eye is facing you. Well, what can you, uh, can you show me around? My my new hotel. <laughs> well, oh, well, old Pete doesn't do too much uh, seeing no more. <laughs> well, uh, you can give yourself a tour, and he puts down on the desk and slides over to you a map, a little welcome map. 
that says the Seven Stars Hotel welcomes you. And it has just a little layout of the, not the property, but the ins. Oh, yeah, the entire property in the inside. Right there, it tells you a little bit of everything. That's how we, we get around in here. <laughs> <laughs> One more question for you, old Pete. Do you... <laughs> do you... You don't come with the hotel, do you? Well, old Pete was employed by good old uh, with Sierra Abinus. Yes, sir. I'm here. I'm the night's guard. You never want things sneaking around in here, you know. <laughs> That's the case, huh? I turn the Dax in a little too loud, just go... There's going to be some layoffs soon. <laughs> and then I start walking down the hallway. <laughs> well, yeah, y'all go see yourself around. And, uh, well, old Pete, he's going to be heading off soon. You see, he's got a can of open, like, peaches with a spoon, you know, on the table. And behind him, you can see, you know, where all the, the main office is. Uh, but he's like, oh, go look around the property and come back to the office and there should be some things here for you. Oh, Pete made sure that the three rooms here on the first floor, uh, well, the ground floor, I mean, <laughs> that they were all set up for your uh, special needs and they're clean and feel free to sleep there. <laughs> Did you get the uh, warmed cat bed that I recommended? Well, we ain't got no electricity right now, and we've been closed down for, nay, 40 years. This is, this is amateur hour. <laughs> I'm gonna just keep walking. Well, old Pete will be seeing you. <laughs> or maybe I don't see so well. And he <laughs> kind of stumbles out. And you have a little map. I guess um, the first thing I would probably do is go to my room to drop off all my stuff and make sure Foxy's doing okay. Sure, the bedrooms that he assigned uh, on the ground floor are bedrooms one, two, one, three, and three. three. That makes sense. I, of course, am getting bedroom one. <laughs> if you'll excuse me, I go up to the door and I try to open it. <laughs> oh, the door's unlocked. Yeah, I just go in then. <laughs> you just go in and the bedroom's got a fireplace, a wood-burning stove, bed frame, chair. It's not clean. It's just like the dust cloths have been taken off is about it. <laughs> <sighs> so it's got like 40 years worth of dust in some places. But like you could tell he tried to wipe a few things off maybe. I, I, I turn my backpack around and look at Foxy and I just go, we might have to film a haunted hotel photo shoot here at the rate it's going because this place is terrifying we're gonna spritz this right up it's gonna be the best hotel that you'd ever stayed in foxy i guarantee it <laughs> <laughs> and just so everybody knows uh foxy is a sphinx cat like a really a kind of old sphinx cat that i dress up in fashions for my instagram oh, kind of old all right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and i i put the backpack on the floor and i open it up so that she can roll uh walk around the uh uh, the the room and stuff. She stretches out, begins to walk around, then you see her dash. She dashes again as a mouse runs along the floor. Oh no, that's bad for your diet! <laughs> I kind of chase her around the room, <laughs> but somebody else could do something. Yeah, I was about well. to say, and settling into, uh, what, what does, uh, let's go with Dax next. Dax, where do you go next? I don't, I'll go, I'll let Annabelle choose whatever room she wants and I'll pick the other one. Annabelle, you have a preference. You choose? Bedroom two or three? I'll take three. See what it is. So, Dax, you see the door to your bedroom, and it's in really ornate, like gold plated bedroom two, is what it says on your front door. And it seems like it's the only like part of the signage that hasn't been updated with the hotel. Part of the original building of that 18th century, they kind of wanted to keep some of those little parts here and there, but it's been attempted to be modernized a few times. Like the 18th century, then it was trying to be updated in the 1910s, then the 20s, then the 50s, then the 70s. So you see weird decorations kind of all around. You go into your room, it's about the same. Wood-burning stove, bed frame, everything's dusty, but all the dust covers have been taken off. Things have been cleaned. Um, but your bed is in the shape of a heart. Just kind of looks at the bed. The love all right. suite. All right. 
I'll, I'll lay, like carefully lay out my my suitcase and unpack, put put whatever my clothes I need in the drawers, lay out three protein bars, put my books in a nice pile. Very good. <laughs> and Emma, you get into bedroom three. Yeah. Yeah. What's and it's more or less the same. There's a bed. Is a heart? No, not a heart. This one. You did not get okay. the the love suite. You have just a regular bed, more like, more like Garfield's room. I forgot. <laughs> um, okay, I will probably um, put my stuff down, not unpack, because I don't want to, no, I'm not unpacking in here. And, um, but I'll I'll separate so that I have a backpack full of like my main gear that I want to make sure I have on me, but then leave all the rest of the shit. <laughs> make a listen check. Uh, a fifty-three. That's high. <laughs> Did you pass or no? Uh, no, no. No, I don't. you hear <laughs> the yelling of the mob outside. Very faint. And you hear a scratching, but you can't tell where it's from. A scratching? Scratching. Can I take a moment to try and find it? That was your listen check that you didn't Damn. pass. <laughs> Great, good, fantastic. Living that occult life. Great. Yep, I'm doing so good. I'm switching my dice. I never <laughs> thought I'd put my dice in fail. <laughs> Right when it's hey, when the, the the crescendo of the music gets really tense as you're trying to listen, you just hear a loud like thump on your wall, and you go, "Foxy, stop! You can't eat the mouse like that. It's gonna be really bad for your diet. Your skin's gonna get all bad." <laughs> oh my God. Yikes! I'm gonna. What go do you do next? The room. I'm gonna Great. Go to the room and go check on on. Uh the cat. I'm Not more me. concerned with the yeah. cat. No. <laughs> You're fine. Yeah. It's the cat I'm concerned about. After I settle then I go to Garfield too. You open okay. the door to my room and I'm just holding uh I'm holding Foxy and she's just kind of like, you know, a big naked skinned cat. <laughs> That's like a little tubby and stuff like that. And I'm just holding the door as you open it like I was about to come to you. I'm just like, Annabelle, can you realign Foxy's chakras? I think he's very she's very stressed with everything that's going on. I'm going to like hold my hand over her head and like whisper something, but I'm saying like goldfish in like, <laughs> I don't know, another language. <laughs> oh, and, thank you. <laughs> and she'll be fine. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I put her back down in the room and I shut the door behind me so she's just in the room by herself. Um, Dex is rolling his eyes in the background. <laughs> this is why I pay her more than you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I turn around and Dex. <laughs> I suppose we should check out the office like old Pete suggested. Yeah, so you all go to the office? Uh, yeah, sounds like a plan. Perfect. So you, you get to the office, it's all cluttered and dusty, just kind of like everything else in here. Junk is scattered about on the desk, piles on the floor, uh, drawers that have paper bursting out of them, things like that. You find paper, ledgers, dried up ink wells on the top of the desk with nothing else around it is a general ledger. It's just a piece of paper and in big handwriting it says, under no circumstances is the western red cedar tree situated in the northeastern corner of the property to be uprooted or otherwise moved in respect of the native people's beliefs, as in accordance with your hotel deed. I could get behind that. Uh, I, I hand it over to Dax. I'm just like, is this something I have to sign? Is it, do I have to sign this? Is this no, it's document? already in the. No, it's it's legal. It's notarized. No, okay, okay. <laughs> I just kind of, I try to kind of put it with the more important looking papers somewhere, and then I go to like Dax. Maybe you should actually hold I'll on. To yeah, this. I'll take that. Yes. I'll just put, it my, put it in my folder. Yeah, it's it's good. It's good. <laughs> uh, I look around. Is there anything else important that maybe I should know about in this room? I make a spot hidden check or okay. a library use. Uh, I will make a spot hidden check. 
Okay. Unless if there's an old computer in here. There's no Because <laughs> I have good computer <laughs> use, but I don't have libraries. I got a 19 under 50, so that's good. It's actually really good. There's uh, ledgers, and all the ledgers are dating certain years, you know, 1863, 1864, 1865. Um, there's one year that's pulled out, and that's the year 1924. It's pulled out. It's on the desk next to it. Oh, well, so okay. it's been pulled out recently, but it's out already. Oh, okay. So it is there then? It is there, yes. It's okay. missing on the shelf, but it's on the desk. <laughs> oh, okay. Like someone's been looking through it. That's interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look at that really quick just because I noticed that. You see a ton of names. Hmm. It's a yellowing guest book. Anyone who with any name and location of any visitor that's been there in that year. <laughs> Do I notice any super famous names that a 25 year old would immediately recognize? Not in the least. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> I was like, ah, well. Maybe one day our ledger will be filled with, like, George Clooney and other cat people. <laughs> and I put it down. Is he, is he a cat person? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I heard he's a cat person. He's a big cat person. I think he Can commented I... on a lot of my stats, but it could have been a bot. Anyway. <laughs> uh, the, the ledgers have, like, how many people stayed, basically, and that's it. Uh, it's it, it's a guest book, so like it's uh, the okay. ledger is people who came in, they like signed their name and where they came from and gotcha. what dates they stayed till. Okay. It, uh, there are hundreds like... of pages each. Oh, that's a lot. Can I take like a quick swing through and see if there's any names that seem noteworthy or historically important? You can go ahead and make a library use roll. Oh my god, that's... Oh no, that's fine, that's 19. That's good, that's fine. 19? Yeah, uh, uh, no one you really know. Uh, you can make an art and craft roll if you'd like. An art and craft roll? Uh... It's an art roll. You realize it's made out of macaroni. <laughs> <laughs> Each letter involved. Beautifully in done. <laughs> I sure know that's an 88, so. Nope, you can tell it's been rifled through um, and, and looked through. Huh. Alrighty. Um, is old Pete gone? Old Pete's been long gone. Oh okay, yeah, he he left while we went to our rooms. Yeah, with well, this can of peaches and spoon still on the table. You mentioned that there were workers. Uh, they aren't near the premises at the moment, right? Nope, they'll meet you there in the morning. That okay. was what you got from Revanesh. And in prior conversations, let's say that he decided that um, because obviously the hotel needs updating and there's no workers nearby. But he, um, you know, from his background, that well, I don't know if I. I don't know how much you know of his background. Um, you'd have to do research. Much. If you, you'd yeah. have to literally. So we're playing a modern day scenario. You can literally Google people. Yeah, true. I <laughs> like wouldn't. Tell, think you could tell that me that you did research on them. Yeah. Um, if you had a question and pull out your satellite phone, but uh, he is there. He's your main contact. The Tinglet people are the the native tribe that is nearby, and they will be helping you with the renovations on the hotel. Okay, um, but, but I don't need to talk. Waiting for to you. Them. They have a list of tasks to do, just basic stuff, but they will listen to your uh, specific requests as well. Okay, but they won't see sense. you till tomorrow. Yeah, but they won't be here till tomorrow is what I mean. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Um, all right. Uh, well, I think this is the only thing that old Pete intended is for us to get in this room. Um, is it? What time is it right now? Is it pretty late? You rolled in. It was closer to 6, um, so it's probably, about, I don't know, 6.45. You still have some light out, but it is getting dark. Uh, I suppose maybe we should figure out how to get the electricity on. Uh, old Pete. Sorry, in your bedrooms there are candles. Candles. Oh. Excellent. Oh, he didn't mean that the lights just weren't turned on. He meant that they don't have... <gasps> <laughs> I lose 75 sanity. Leaping to the hotel. It's just not on right now. 
Oh, th so there is. So we could potentially get it back on, or we with, think maybe with we some could. work. Yeah, that could be something you sign tomorrow. Well, for example. yeah. Uh, I guess for now, maybe we can we'll, have a little let's bit. Let's say of you have basic stuff like flashlights. Yeah. I put that in, in my gear list. I have you did. I did and a too. Flashlight. I think too. Um, do you guys think we should t try to get the electricity on tonight so we have it going? Probably, no. right? No? Okay. I have I have no skill in that, so if you know how to connect to electricity, sure. I mean, I've had to make a computer and stuff like that, so I'm pretty good about it, I guess. I can I'm not going alone. Foxy can, isn't coming. Foxy needs her beauty sleep. And I can I can watch you try to do it if you want. I would like that. I will, well you know who I really want is the ghost expert. <laughs> sure. I'm not trusting anything, especially since she said this place is definitely haunted. <laughs> Absolutely, for sure. Uh, all right, I guess with that, um, uh, can I look at the map and see where potentially they would keep, like, the electricity? <laughs> if you can determine that by looking at that map, you can make a guess. Oh, let's see. You've inherited this place. You don't have any blueprints or schematics or anything about anything here. Oh, uh, old Pete. Great. <laughs> well, there's a kitchen and then there's an S, and I think that's storage. There's a lot of S's. There's like five on this map. There are, oh, yeah, there are a lot of S's. There's nothing in the office, like a breaker in the office. Do you see anything in here? The only thing you see in the office is an old bell system. Ooh, what's this do? Gonna... It was a system like you saw in your bedroom. There was kind of in the corner. There was a long rope, and if you were to tug on that rope, it would ring a bell in the office. Oh, that's neato! I think we're gonna keep that. Cats will like it. <laughs> It'll be such a good party trick for your, you know, guests when the ghosts decide to start ringing that as well. We are getting rid of the ghosts. Their... They won't be here when guests start arriving. <laughs> that is why you are here. <laughs> As he says that, the bell to room seven rings. <laughs> I just scream. <laughs> Make a sanity check. Yeah, absolutely for for Carmel. <laughs> Everybody can. Everybody make it. Yep. Yep. Just one point of sanity damage. Can you gain sanity back or nope. no? Well, sometimes. Great. Sometimes. Cool, 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 cool. That's fine. Not worried about that at all. 